Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and this is another edition of In The Lab, my regular take on all the new cool hardware that I've got in the lab, stuff that I'm working on and things that you can look forward to in future. So this week got some more exciting gear in terms of a mini ITX case that I'm working on, another one. We've got a an M.2 heatsink group test which is following straight off the bat of my recent Corsair PCI Express 5 SSD review, the MP700, which you can see in a banner up above. And we also have some really funky slim radiators to show you today as well that will be going inside said mini ITX case. First though, a word from our sponsor. Our sponsor today is scdkey.com where right now you can get great deals on software such as Windows 10, Windows 11 and Microsoft Office. And even better is I've got a 25% discount code to share with you guys. Windows 10 Professional, for example, which is fully upgradable for free to Windows 11. All you have to do is click buy now, enter the code CRT25 into the promotion code box, click apply, and the US price will drop from $22.09 down to just $16.57, and in the UK, you'll see the price fall to just £12.79. Once you've paid, head over to your order page, click the get key button, and copy your Windows key code. When you're in Windows, you wanna move your mouse over to the Start button, right click, go to Settings, then Update and Security, and then move up to Activation, and finally click on Change Your Product Key, copy and paste your brand new product key into the box, click Next, then click Activate, and your Windows 10 installation is now activated. You can do the exact same thing with Office 2021 Professional, CRT25, click Apply, and you will see a hefty discount. Thanks again to SCDKey for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so first of all, we have the M.2 SSD heatsinks that I will be taking a look at very soon on the channel. And uh, part of the reason I really want to do it, uh, I was going to do another group test this year anyway, just to refresh because there's a whole bunch of different M.2 heatsinks on the market now, um, in addition to or instead of the ones that I looked at in my uh, last group test. But the primary reason is this bad boy here. So this is the Corsair MP700. This is just one of a number of PCI Express 5 M.2 SSDs to be, uh, to be launched this year. And uh, there are lots more coming soon. So these things can churn out 10 gigabytes a second. That's 10,000 megabytes a second. So they're easily three to three and a half megabyte or thousand megabytes a second faster than the fastest PCI Express 4 SSDs that are currently out there. So things like the Samsung 990 Pro, the WD SN850X, uh, those kind of things, they just get blown away by this bad boy here. But the downside is it does run pretty hot. So what we're going to be doing is kind of carrying on from the testing that I did recently uh, in my video about the review of this thing, which you can see in a banner up above. And uh, see just what kind of cooling you need for these SSDs. So we already tested the fantastic Thermalright HR092280 uh, Pro. Uh, that performed really, really well. And we are gonna be comparing that one to all these other ones. So we've got a heatsink from Be Quiet. We've got the Sabrent Rocket heatsink there, which uh, actually, I think it comes with one of, one of its versions of its, uh, its own uh, PCI Express 4 SSDs, but the, you can actually buy the heatsink separately. So the other ones we've got is a really funky fan-assisted one from Icybox. I've not had anything from Icybox for a while, very, very long time. I think I had like an old NAS or something or external hard drive enclosure, but they've got a fan-assisted heatsink there, and it looks like it's got a standard three-pin fan header as well, so that's going to be kind of interesting to do. Um, although it might look, looks like it might be a fixed speed. I'm not entirely sure. It looks like there's a single cable coming out there, but we'll find out more in the review. Whether or not you need it or whether it's going to be hideously noisy remains to be seen. And uh, we've also got uh, a couple of Johnsbo uh, heat sinks as well. So this one's just a standard heat sink, but this one's kind of funky because it's actually got built in RGB lighting. So that's going to be uh, really, really interesting if you want to jazz up your PC. I know there was, uh, there's been a couple of uh, RGB enabled. Um, M.2 heatsinks or um, just like M.2 SSDs equipped with heatsinks already. So it's kind of an interesting idea to actually combine 
a heat sink that you can add to your existing SSD and just jazz it up a bit. So, and then of course we've got the uh, the Be Quiet NC1 Pro as well. So there might be a few additions to this pile of SSDs here, but like I said, we're gonna be testing it with some older PCI Express 4 SSDs and also the brand new Corsair MP700 PCI Express 5 SSD as well. So next up is a whole bunch of alpha cool radiators and a Sunnyside Up Design or SS UPD, well, uh, however you want to say it, the Meshlicious of course. And this mod is going to be something that I'll be working on over the next few weeks and months. Uh, following on from a conversation that I had with the company on Instagram, they just reached out and said, oh, do you fancy working on a, uh, a Meshlicious for us? And I said, well, I've kind of already got one, but for that, for now, that one, as you can see over there, that's currently my main system. Um, that's what I edit all these videos on and do all my daily work on. Um, I kind of need that one as my main PC, which will probably be fully watercooled at some point. But then when the company reached out and they said, um, how about we send you one and then you can get to work uh, a bit sooner on it, then I said, well, yeah, sure. If you, want to, if you want to send me the case, then I'm more than happy to do that. So uh, that is what we've got. And we've got some uh, optional side panels for it as well. So I'm decided about what design I'm going to use on the exterior. Definitely some form of spray painting, probably my... Uh, sort of signature marble effect on the outside or something. I haven't decided yet, but one thing I definitely will be doing is doing some custom water cooling in here. I'm probably doing something that I haven't really seen yet, which is including two very large radiators inside, courtesy of AlphaCore. Now these are the AlphaCore uh, Nexos Slim radiators. So very few people using these out there at the moment. And yeah, you've got excess PC, but the benefit of the Alpha Core ones is, yeah, you've got the 120 millimeter versions and uh, obviously 240 millimeter as well. But the killer deal is that you get 140 millimeter variants as well. So you get the 140 millimeter slim fan and a 280 millimeter slim fan. And I'm pretty sure I can get two of those bad boys in the Meshlicious. So how about dual 280 millimeter radiators with some pretty high end hardware? and a uh, probably a hardline um, liquid loop, of course. And uh, the rest of the hardware, undecided yet, um, probably gonna involve either Alpha Cool or EK or Bits Power or something. Um, but obviously there, is, there are very few manufacturers that offer the slim radiators. So with, if I wanted to dial it up to 280 millimeter, the Alpha Cool is pretty much your only choice. And you can see a link in the description below for these radiators and the awesome meshlicious that I will be looking at very, very soon too. So that's uh, it for this section and we're gonna move on to the fan testing. So the final part in today's video is a quick talk about my new fan testing rig. So this is uh, just part of it here today. And uh, as we can see, we've got the final piece of the puzzle, which is the Silverstone Air Slimmer 120 ARGB, which is Silverstone's new slim fan. So we are gonna be putting that on a whole bunch of other slim fans to the test with my new test gear. So we've got a brand new anemometer, which is super sensitive, way more sensitive than the uh, the last one that I had, so hopefully some better results this time. And also this time, as well as sound testing and uh, noise normalized, speed normalized, and uh, all that kind of stuff um, in terms of the results, we are going to be strapping the fans to radiators. As per usual, the airflow out the back of the radiator being a very good indicator of static pressure and general fan performance. And we are also going to be strapping a custom liquid loop to these two radiators. So as you can see here, we've got the 140 millimeter slim alpha cool fan and the 120 model, uh, 120 millimeter model here. We will be strapping both 120 millimeter and 140 millimeter fans to these radiators connected to a custom liquid loop. You can see I've got some uh, quick release fittings already and waiting to go there. And the idea is that we will be seeing real world performance differences in terms of cooling a CPU. So we'll be using um, an actual motherboard with an actual CPU getting actual temperatures for those components and uh, seeing just how well the fans perform in terms of keeping your CPU cool if you used a radiator for example. So some actual real world testing to see what differences there are between the fans when dealing with a typical scenario. So I thought about using a custom liquid cooler, but I thought that's probably not a bad idea because if you take a look at my NZXT H1 pump failure video, you can see that all-in-one liquid coolers tend to 
have issues um, in uh, over like long periods of time. So performance can vary. The same goes for heat sinks. You know the um, the vapor um, the liquids that evaporate in inside uh, uh, vapor chambers and heat pipes they do um, change in terms of performance over time. So I thought the best way to kind of have a test rig going that was going to suit me over time was going to be to have a custom liquid loop. And uh, that way is it's probably more indicative of what you're going to be using, slim fans especially, uh, with, um, you know, you're, you might be strapping them to your case, but you're probably not going to be fixing them to a heatsink or an AIO liquid cooler. You're going to be doing a custom loop or you're going to be fitting them to your case. So I thought custom loop was probably a more interesting way to go. Um, cooling a case, yeah, it will probably have some sort of a difference, but it's a little bit more difficult to uh, to measure. So that's what I will be doing. So that is the uh, fan test gear that I've just uh, come up with this week. So that is what I will be doing very, very shortly with a whole bunch of slim fans uh, for the best slim fan of 2023 group test. And that is coming very, very soon. So thanks for watching another episode of In The Lab. Don't forget to, out, to check out my previous episodes and all my recent videos. Thanks to my sponsors today. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as well. So your subscription is very, very important to this channel. They are always appreciated. So just click that subscribe button and you'll be notified when I upload all these cool new videos. So. Have a, a great rest of your weekend and I will catch you soon.